papers today and we're joined now by Plain English editor Andrew Pegler. Andrew, good morning. Good morning to you. What's first on your list today? Uh, well, the uh, phony Tony uh, fallout continues. Uh, now, Barnaby Joyce apparently came out yesterday in defence, along with everyone else trying to sort of defend uh, the revelations on the 7.30 report, and said, uh, and I quote, uh, what someone might say to their lover in the heat of passion is entirely different to what you say to the checking out chick at the grocery uh, section at the supermarket. And this is part of a Tony Wright piece, and Tony very amusingly went on to say that um, uh, of course, I love you in the morning doesn't automatically equ equate with no cash out, thanks. Uh, so uh, it would seem that uh, Barnaby's uh, outburst, while it's sort of mildly helpful, has probably been a little bit of a distraction. Uh, and uh, this continues, I think, to be either uh, one of the great home goals of the last recent political history or when the dust settles, it may in fact uh, be a bit of a stroke of strategic genius as the, the, the contrast between the two administrations becomes very much more apparent. You know, Abbott from the hip and, and, and Kevin is a bit more of a sort of a technocratic uh, Dalek style. So do you think it works for him, the, um, the, the line that Tony Abbott's running? I well, I, his political antenna has always been pretty good. So I have to say, let's just see how this plays out. But in the, in the, the present uh, environment, uh, where trust and honesty seems to have taken a big toll on the Rudd gov government. The tactic is questionable and without a doubt at this stage. So uh, at this point, I can't imagine it's going to work for him, but you never know. Yeah, but still there's going to be that question raised about every policy he announces, uh, especially in the so-called heat of the moment. My, my best line from this morning's coverage is Phil Hudson, the political editor of the Herald mm -hmm. Sun, who says Tony Abbott is now a man with an asterisk over his head. Yes. <laughs> 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 Every comment you've got to pass through, whether it's carefully scripted or whether it's in the heat of the moment. And as we saw in this program yesterday, and as has been shown in the letters uh, pages today, it, it polarises people. A lot of people yeah. think that it's a stroke of political genius. A lot think he's been very silly. Yeah, well, we'll see how, we'll see how it goes. And I know that uh, moments after the 7.30 report ended, YouTube had featured, a, a, you know, a Labor put together, a, 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 you know, their own anti kind of Abbott playing on that, uh, on, on that co comment, which, you know, goes to plays into the whole instantaneous media feedback thing as well. Uh, now you're looking at the front page of the age business section as well. Yes, yes. Uh, now the Reserve Bank, uh, borrowers can expect a reprieve from uh, interest rates rises in the next few months, say analysts, following the minutes that came out yesterday. Uh, look, after six official rate rises since October, the board are saying that mortgage rates are more or less back to their long-term average. And reading between the lines, people are saying, OK, the RBA will probably stay on the, uh, on, on the sidelines till about August. Uh, and uh, economists are saying that um, from then uh, things may ratchet up a bit. Uh, of course, we have to see what happens and how things play out in Europe, yeah. which is a big... Which I even read Big somewhere is that at least one or two brave economists to suggest if the situation got worse in Europe, a rate cut mm. could be back on the agenda if there's a severe danger of contagion in the world economy going through yet another financial crisis. Well, the whole economist prediction thing at the moment is because the whole thing is a bit unprecedented. And it reminds me of this quote by Galbraith that was something to the effect of uh, economics forecasting was invented to make astrology look credible. Yep, they don't seem to get it right very often. Um, we've been reporting during the week about the the uh, anniversary of the recording of that in incredibly significant rock album, Exile on Main Street by the Rolling Stones. You're a Stones fan, Virginia. I am indeed. Very wonderful, big one. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. 38 years ago... I'm glad you think it's wonderful. Well, I, <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, 38 years ago, the Rolling Stones recorded a double album called Exile on Main Street, uh, uh, recorded in Keith Richards' uh, basement in Nice. The Stones had fled England through the taxes and uh, management reasons and settled in Nice and basically uh, partied the only way the Stones can for the better part of the summer, which is quite a long, hot summer. The album uh, came at the end of what is a very, very rich period for the Rolling Stones. They had four albums at this point, uh, uh, Beggar's Banquet, Let It Bleed, Sticky Fingers and then a double album of Exile on Main Street. Uh, it's being remastered and re-released. There are 10 new tracks on it, which is, I, can't, I have to say, I can't wait to hear them. And I'll be right out there, you know, lining up with, 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 every, with everyone else to get the book and the DVD and, and pour over the sort of whole thing. It'll be and fantastic. Ready for the next tour, inevitably, as well. That's going to follow this, uh, this reissue. There well, they're on the road. has to be, yes. They're on the road next year, apparently. Yeah.
I mean, extraordinary that they still keep doing it. I can't believe it. I saw them a couple of years ago. Oh, they put on a great just, show. It's just yeah, amazing. It's a, it's a great stuff. gig. Yeah. Mm. One of the, my favourite images is seeing the, the four of them at the end of the concert where they come up out on stage, arms um, sort of linked over each other, crowds just completely roaring, and they look like the happiest, luckiest guys yep. that I've ever seen yep. in my life. And it's all over their faces. We get to do this. We, <laughs> we get to do this and, for a living. And paid lots and, yeah, and lots and we get and paid lots money, of money for And it. we're rich and this is fun. And I remember looking at them thinking, oh, you have the best lives. And Keith Richards is just simply happy he's still alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, as they say, come the nuclear Armageddon, there'll be two things alive, cockroaches and, and Keith, Keith Richards. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're finishing with the Herald Sun today. Yeah, uh, uh, Gough Whitlam has um, uh, moved into a nursing home. He's 93 uh, and he's living in a nursing home in Elizabeth Bay and him and his wife are celebrating the 68th anniversary next month. And so big out to Gough there. Where's um, the nursing home that he's gone into? In Elizabeth Bay. So he's, uh, so he's in Sydney. That's actually reasonably close to where the, the Whitlams um, have lived for the last few years as well, which is in these eastern suburbs. Uh, he's, he's still considered to be compass mentis, though? Yeah, yeah very much compass mentis. Yep. But physically over the last year, he has uh, deteriorated somewhat. And uh, he's been in assisted care at home. Yep. Uh, and he's in, now getting around in a wheelchair. And, um, but he's very much still going on upstairs. Still very mentally active. Yeah, yep. mm. yeah. Good to see you. Thanks for that, Andrew. Good to see you guys. Okay. See Thank you, you later. Bye.